did it look good on Stay tuned for The Joan Quinn Profiles. As an editor for Andy Warhol's interview, the Los Angeles Herald Examiner, LA Style, and Detour Magazines, Joan covered the social set, the Hollywood hotshots, the international art scene, the mysteries of food, the excitement of travel, and the fabulous world of fashion. Joan continues to find creative people on the cutting edge who make things happen. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. Waiting to be profiled in the green room is artist, actor, John Likes. Actually, John's on the set. In the green room is actor, director, Daryl Larson. Artist John Likes was born in Long Beach at the Seaside Hospital, the same place I was born. <laughs> he took classes at Cal State Long Beach and went to Long Beach City College. But he never graduated. Why didn't you stay in school, John? Well, I was one of those people that uh, came along during the whole Vietnam thing, and I, I was studying art and uh, drama at the time in college, and that wasn't good enough to keep you out of the Army. So oh. I'd have to take off and go up to San Francisco and establish residence up there, and then they'd send my file up there. By the time my file was up there, I'd be back down here, and I'd reestablish residence <laughs> down here. And th that way I kept them guessing until I was in college again with a, with a uh, uh, pre-med major or some other thing which I wasn't interested in. Oh, you did do that. Do you think if you had continued in art school, your work would have changed in any way? Well, actually, what I found in, in art school, Joan, was very few instructors that seemed to know uh, the traditional techniques of oil painting. Uh, they all said, get your terps and your linseed oil and, you know, sit down there and just kind of put it on there on top of the pencil. And that wasn't what I wanted to do. I wanted to paint like Vermeer or Van Eyck or some of these great Dutch masters. Oh, you did have uh, some mentors in mind and oh, some yeah. heroes in your vocabulary. Absolutely. The, the great, great masters were my heroes. And, uh, and actually, the Vietnam thing was actually kind of a blessing in disguise because it got me out of the country. Uh, I, I left the country uh, and went to, as an expatriate, and lived two years in Europe. Oh, you did. Well, the other thing, talking about the great masters, and then you really came into the art world through your record covers and, and uh, movie posters. Yeah, well, I've, I've been very fortunate, you know, being someone that can draw and paint, you know, like uh, the previous uh, lady, Sylvia, who's so very talented. Uh, when you can do a resemblance to someone, you can make money whether it's uh, doing uh. a portrait or whether you can do a painting of Tony Bennett or Barbara Streisand or Bob Dylan. I mean, there's, there's uh, people want to pay you to do that. I think what, one of the things that I uh, read about you or, or remember is that you could do these quick studies. Did oh, yeah. you ever make a living doing quick studies or drawing people on the boardwalk? <laughs> well, I, I can't get into it at the boardwalk or at shopping malls, you know, having guys leaning over my paintings with their kid eating ice cream and <laughs> globs of ice cream. I can't do that. But in Europe, it's different. It's not because I'm a snob. It's just the way they treat you over in Europe. Like I did a, a quick sketch portrait of the chief of police of Venice, Italy, and all the Italians were feeding me and stuff, and he was sitting right there drinking with everybody. Imagine uh, Chief Gates or Chief Williams <laughs> having drinks in a club with a bunch of regular guys. It never happened here, but, but there he was, and I sketched him away, and, and they gave me this huge bill. It was like uh, twice as big as a big American bill, 40,000 lira with a picture of Leonardo da Vinci on the cover of it, and uh, it was worth like f about $35. I thought, gee, well, if at the time that was a lot of money, I could live almost a week on thirty-five bucks. So you didn't keep it and frame it. Well, I, I did. I did <laughs> keep it, I, but I was going to. I tried to give it back to my friend Vittorio. I said, Vittorio, please take it back. He said, No, Giovanni, you keep. Oh, how great, <laughs> Giovanni! So you were never a starving artist because you were doing record covers and you were eating with the chief of police. Oh yeah. Well, in Italy, if you're going to be an artist, Italy's in the best place to be an artist. They say, Mangiare, mangiare, <laughs> and they bring you bottles of wine. They bring you loaves of bread, and they just. Sweep you know, they want to watch you paint, and they're respectful, you know. It's like they figure, well, you come to the right place. You know, if you're uh, studying yoga, you go to India. If you're studying art, you come to Italy. I mean, you know. Did you paint this um, We Are the World poster through the Italian eyes, or is it all over the world? Because you said you traveled a lot. Yeah, I was fortunate. Earlier on, before I uh, went to Europe, I actually did a, a quick uh, 
tour of uh, the Orient and the Merchant Marine, oh. which uh, was a, quite an experience. The ship hadn't been out since World War II. It had been in mothballs, and you lean up against the, the, the bulkhead, and the paint would crack, and grease <laughs> would come through and get on your clothes. Uh -oh. and the engine blew up in Seattle, and we spent two weeks there. Uh -oh. We finally <laughs> went through the Sea of Japan and got to Vietnam with this load of tanks and stuff, and uh, they're all alcoholics on the ship. It was, it was quite, I barely well, but got But we didn't have that in this no, picture. No, <laughs> but I saw a lot of interesting faces. Now, with these, if you notice, there's a lot of Asian faces and there's mm -hmm. African faces as well as uh, Hispanic and Caucasian. Now, I, I wanted to evoke, and when I did this painting, the wisdom of children. You know, I, I did this five years before the project came out. And uh, I originally uh, saw it as a billboard for uh, Foster and Kleiser or something like uh, that. I see. And, uh, but nobody would donate the billboard, Joan. So I, I did a sketch for Roland Young, who was uh, art director at A&M Records, because he had a project for a group called Third World coming up. And he said, gee, can you do something like that in, in 10 days? And I said, it's in my mind. I can do it in uh. 10 days, no problem. So I delivered this 36-inch canvas filled with these hundreds of faces in 10 days. You were too early. Because I think p people are so m much more politically correct now. They would have given you a billboard immediately. Yeah, back You then. were just too early in your time doing Probably. this and getting ahead of the game. <laughs> Did you think that you um, sacrificed art to go into show business? Because I know you're an actor. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm fortunate that, uh, again, my early experience, uh, I had two passions. One was painting and the other was acting. And I played some football, too, of course, to please my dad, but, but, uh, and I was okay at it. But, but the thing <laughs> is that, <laughs> that, the, that the acting is, is like, it's therapeutic for me, Joan, because when I'm working with a team, just like now with you and with your lovely crew here, you know, it's a team effort, you know, and you're the quarterback right now. Maybe I'm the uh, halfback. <laughs> so you do feel that when you go in for things, when yeah. you go into to audition or get Absolutely. a role? Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's almost like sports. Because uh, when I go in uh, to audition, the other actors are competitors, but it's like we're all running the same race. I wish them good luck, and they wish me good luck. It's a very uh, elegant uh, sort of exchange is we it? have. Actually. When you go uh, to an audition, is it easy or hard for a person as big and uh, with this look of yours to get a role? Well, it, uh, again, it depends on what they're calling for, because usually if they're looking for a bald guy, there's usually big bald guys, little bald guys, <laughs> uh, oriental bald guys, African-American, <laughs> Caucasian, bl <laughs> blonde eyebrows, dark eyebrows, the whole bit. <laughs> One time I walked into the wrong room, and they were doing this thing for uh, the big paper towels of the bra brawny. Oh, you know? yeah, and that's what I would think. <laughs> every one of these brawny guys were dressed like lumberjacks, and they all had little beards, about 50 guys. And I thought, this is, this is funny. But, you know, uh, just briefly about the painting again, I did the painting to show that children are superior to adults ah. because children are not prejudiced. So children would come into your auditions too and you well, could go right for them, right? Well, you actually see? kids, you know, I don't have any kids of my own, but I, I love kids from a distance and, and the idea of what kids really are, like they're pure, they're, they're curious, they don't make judgments. They say, you're a black person, I'm curious about you. Or you're a white person, I'm curious about you. Not, like, I hate you because you're different. Yeah. I'm curious. No, I think and that's, that's the way we should be. I think. I think that's really the beauty of just what you're saying. And I think, I, I didn't mean you were ahead. You were ahead in your thoughts. Because mm -hmm. I think we could never be ahead enough to, to say the things that you've been saying. I mean, I think we should just keep up and keep saying those things. Um, in keeping with with the way you you give and take, if a role came up and you had to wear a wig or a hairpiece, would you do it? Oh, uh, th th this is funny. <laughs> I've actually got some crazy hairpieces, like sort of like old uh, house pets that were squashed in the alley or something. You've <laughs> worn them? Pretty bad. I mean, I've got a mohawk thing that people uh, that I wear. And oh, I've you actually, do. I've done two. I've done two commercials with that mohawk. One was a national Midas muffler commercial. Really? Yeah, and... Uh, oh, so you do wear a wig. <laughs> yeah, well, it glues on with a little spirit gum, which is, of course, right out of a tree. It's fairly easy to get on and off. And then I have a long-haired wig, which I was going to do for a biker role once with phony tattoos and the whole oh, bit. that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> it all sounds really good. Did you ever take acting lessons? Yes, I did. I studied at the Lee Strasberg Institute when Mr. Strasberg himself was alive. Oh, you did? And I took a seminar class with him before that at UCLA. And then I studied, of course, at Cal State Long Beach and also at Long Beach City College under David Ems, who's now head of South Coast Repertory. Oh, the South Coast Rep, right. When you were um, 
going, uh, actually painting, were you also acting? I mean, keeping those two things together at the same time? Or do you still paint and act at oh, the yes, same time? Oh, yes, absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, I also write poetry. Mm. And uh, I've written a couple um. small plays. And what I would do, I would, I would go recite my poetry different places, which is great for cold reading. If actors want a, uh. a, a really good tip for improving their cold reading, reading poetry live is very, very good. So you have to just keep working at your craft, both crafts. Would you give up one for the other? Well, uh, I don't know. Would you, would you give up making love or eating? <laughs> <laughs> They're both wonderful things. Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't think we can go on anymore. I think we have to say goodbye. And I think well, we have to let our, our viewers decide. It would be au revoir, not goodbye. <laughs> goodbye, au revoir, and ciao. <laughs> ciao. <laughs> <laughs> don't go away, even though we'd love to keep John Likes on. We have actor, director, Daryl Larson waiting to come on. So we'll see you in a, a couple of minutes. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thank you, John. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and we're back with actor-director Daryl Larson. Daryl studied in the film departments of UCLA and California Institute of the Arts. He taught a directing class at the American Film Institute, and he's acted on the L.A. stages of The Taper, The South Coast Rep, The Odyssey, The Met, and of course, on Broadway. He worked in not several... Exactly. Not exactly. <laughs> he's worked American Place Theater. It's, it's close to Broadway. <laughs> That's close enough yeah. for us. It's New York. <laughs> he's worked on several television series in leading roles. He starred in feature films like Hero, The China Syndrome, Mike's Murder, and Color of Night. But really, Daryl, what do you spend most of your time doing? You've got so many things in uh, the Well, lately I've, I've spent most of my time lining up people to read from uh, prose, prose work about the movies, movies in literature. I do a, a, a reading series at the Met Theater which is kind of a cooperative alliance of theater artists who share a building. What is it? Oh, it is a cooperative. It is in the sense that um, we, as a group, share responsibility for the building. We make the decisions as a group. Is that the Met Theater? Yeah. And what does MET stand for? Because it capital. Who knows? Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't have <laughs> it's a. Far in the past, it it was attached to a building that we were attached to, and it really, it just means who we are. I see, because you. You're on the board, but yeah. there are many other actors on the board. Yeah. Now I understand what the idea exactly. is. Exactly, and any board member can do a play at the Met. I see. Uh, we don't dictate to each other. If you, you can raise your budget, you can do that play. And that's very unusual. That's, a, that's an unusual way to run a theater. Usually one guy makes the decisions, or one person is, is you know, assigned the job of determining what's to be done. So you know. when you go to produce something or direct something, do you pull other people in from the board? Will, do they sometimes, cooperate with sometimes. you? Sometimes. Uh, Ed Harris and I have done projects together you at, at the You did Scar. Mat. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't see the play, yeah. but it w got wonderful reviews. Yeah. Did you direct it? I directed it, yeah. yeah. And Ed's on the board. Yeah, Ed's on the board and Amy's Amy, on the board. And, and Holly Hunter's on the board. And Beth Henley, who's uh, one oh, of our great playwrights uh, alive in America. Uh, and and other really talented uh, um, and committed to uh, doing theater. Let's let's talk a little bit more about it. It's called the Great Writers Series. Is that what it's called? It's the called? fifth one I've done. It's, <coughs> it's uh, the unique thing about it uh, is that the writers also come and read with actors. And this and is something I'm interested in. I also do a poetry series at the Chateau Marmont where actors read with great poets. And uh, contemporary. Yeah, yeah. All is is it all contemporary? Well, the writers the, are the, the poets can the oh in the in the great writer series. No, I'm doing Nathaniel West and F. Scott right, Fitzgerald. So I'm do, this particular one. The theme is movies and literature. So I've I was recently on a movie in Texas and had a lot of time to read. I read 14 novels in a month, and <laughs> all about movies, uh, all books about the movies. Norman Mailer has a book. Oh. Uh, uh, Larry McMurtry has a book. Right. Uh, uh, Gavin Lambert, who we'll be reading in our series. So uh, you can. So you've read the books. Now you'll. Then I take a selection after. out of that. I, I, I figured the great chapter, the the really uh, sort of uh, chapter that 
that is most emblematic of the book or would be the best dramatic reading. And then I try to figure out who's the perfect person to read this. Oh, and then you match it. Do they, are exactly. they friends of yours or do you just go most after? Most people, m yeah, well, some people are people I've just either worked very briefly with, uh, trying to get Dustin Hoffman to read from What Makes Sammy Run, because he seems to me the perfect person. Mm -hmm. uh, whether he can commit or not, you know, it's, uh, that's showbiz. But that's how, that's what the producing but that's the process part, of it. and then yeah. the directing part. Then I'll go and meet with those people, uh, listen to them read, uh, um, and then we'll, you know, we'll work on it a little bit And it's bit a together. long series. It, it runs goes for from several months. April 9th. You don't want to date no, this? Uh -uh. Yeah, it goes for our 10 weeks. Yeah, so, so, and it's then, a lot of so each year you've done it for that long? I've done two it? a year for really? uh, the last three years. Uh, I skipped, I skipped uh, oh, this, this last fall, so this oh. is the, the fifth one. Well, do you perform as well? Can you perform in these I situations? usually read a, read a piece each time around. Each, uh, each time there's someone on the stage, do you have to get up there? No, 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 no. I mean each series. <laughs> this time I haven't really, I don't have any material picked for myself, but I'll, I'll, you know, I'll hold forth. So you were born in Sacramento? Yes. You're a native Californian? I'm a native Californian. That's unusual. Are you, were you a child actor? Well, I was 17 when that's I first came here and not, started working. Not like in nowadays no, with these no. kids. Oh I mean, and they're Pat. so phenomenal, aren't yeah, they? Really incredible kids. Le this Leonardo DiCaprio, I just find him mind-blowing. I he, know. Everyone thinks he's like the future And his whatever. craft, the refinement of his craft at the, at the age that he is, it's, it's phenomenal. They really, so, but he's but about your age. He's your age, so you can count that when you started, yeah, 17. Yeah, yeah, around that. So yeah. w how did you start? You didn't do the best of Broadway in Sacramento, did you? No, I Have carried. Have you ever heard of that? No, one? but no, I carried uh, <laughs> set pieces around at the music circus. I did you? I, oh, the music circus, yeah, yeah. Sure, and and I also worked in the Eaglet. <laughs> you know, I did kids theater in the Eaglet. And when I was uh, maybe I don't know how old was I, fourteen, I got my friends together and we did a play in the summertime and we. We went to a department store and, and turned part of the department store into a theater and rigged the lights up. Did you? And, and the, off the money that we made that summer, we chartered a bus and went to Ashland, Oregon to the Shakespeare Festival. How divine. Took all, everybody in the play. My friend and I basically were theater freaks. So we you always it. wanted to do it? Always. And you, did you think that you would be just on stage, or did you ever think you'd be? No, in the I love the movies. Oh, you did. Yeah. Oh God, <laughs> uh, it was the world that, that I could escape to. You know, it, I I wasn't particularly happy as a kid, but who is? And and the movies to me, Fred Astaire, James Dean, those people saved my life in a very real way. So you didn't yeah. come from a show business family? Not at all. God, no. Sacramento, I don't think no. so, right? I, I mean, my father had, uh, did do some little theater. Uh, I remember him in a play. Oh, really? Um, but no, I was not a show business family at all. Then Poor white trash. What did the... <laughs> <laughs> John Waters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's more than a, you. I, I lived in a trailer park. Actually, I met you I at a John, Rogers, a, uh, uh, John Rogers. Oh, right. where's my mind? John Waters screening. In the light. <laughs> Your mind is in the light. Isn't that right? Yeah. Long ago. Uh, yeah, we did. I, I, and Divine was there. That's right. and it was, uh, was one of the times we met. Yeah, but yeah. I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about <laughs> you. How did uh, our did you, paths have, have crossed enough? Yeah. yeah. How did you uh, actually get into movies then? I uh, got into movies by doing uh, some work in an evening of scenes that a guy named Bo Wilson from Universal, who was a talent scout. They don't have those people anymore. But you he, were in Sacramento? No, no, no. Oh, I came to UCLA at 17. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. Within two weeks of being here in Los Angeles, I saw an ad in the paper that Sal Mineo was auditioning people for a play. And I thought, Sal Mineo? Really? Who worked with James Dean? <laughs> who is, you know, and I went to the audition and met him. And got many callbacks, and then uh, Don Johnson got the part. You're kidding. I'm not. Are you the, do, do you go up against Don Johnson at auditions? Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, but so we did for many years. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, so he was we right hit, there. We hit town at about the same time. Oh. Um, and another guy that hit town about that time, who's t is a very good friend of mine still, is Michael Ankeen who will be reading in the series. He's reading in your series. He's reading yeah. in one of my favorite books from, uh, from that adventure through movies and literature is a book called uh, Chimney Rock by Charlie Smith, who's a poet 
oh. and, and novelist. And, and it's, I recommend it, folks. It's, <laughs> Read it, right? It, it's an astonishing book. The, the, some, one of the blurbs calls it word drunk, and that's exactly what it is. It's, it's an astonishing book. And Michael, I'm sure will. I'm getting word drunk yes. from listening to you <laughs> because you know so much about so many things. Mm. Um, and, and I don't want to get away from acting because you were in mm. so many really terrific movies, and we have a clip. From oh God, Mike's yeah. Murder. My best movie. Jim Bridges. Jim who Bridges, is a the best director I ever worked with. Wonderful, wonderful person. And a great man. And uh, tell us where we are. I don't know what we're going to see. Uh, this whole movie is is about the, the, the moment that is about we're about to look at, actually, is the convergence of these two people who uh, have both been involved with this guy, Mike, who has been murdered. And uh, <coughs> the whole movie is a sort of bringing together of these the dark world and, and the... the the good and the, the and the bad. So this is the and, and this is the moment where Winger and I finally meet. Okay, let's go. Mike's murder. Stop it! I'm not gonna hurt you. It's Pete. I'm Pete. I'm Mike's friend. I'm gonna let you go. I'll take my hand off you, but you gotta promise not to scream, please. please. Oh, I'm gonna hurt you. I can't tell you. I remember that was like one of the scariest scenes, yeah. and you were like, you were like really sweet, and then so mean, yeah. and looked so great. Oh, wow! Thanks. <laughs> Do you think that in order to be a good director, you have to be an actor first? No, I, I think it helps if, in terms of in the the aspect of directing, which is r related to actors. I mean, directing is a is a major task, and I think, uh, or or a wide-ranging task, and and some people have different aspects of it covered better than others. Jim Bridges happened to have cover the gamut expertly. Oh, because he wasn't you know. an actor. That's right. Oh no, he was. Oh, he was oh, an yeah. actor. Oh, but I think he also, you know, covered the visual aspects of directing films that in a, you know that a lot of directors favor that aspect and don't really deal with the actors and, and the actors are sort of on their own. That's why I wondered if uh, you have more respect for the director if you've acted before or if, the if vice versa. I, th I think directing uh, in the theater has given me a lot of respect for the task of directing and for the, re the really good ones I, I appreciate in a different way than if I had never attempted the task myself and w you know vice versa. Would you give up acting just to direct or do you just see yourself doing this both these I, I'd uh, like things? to keep doing both although it confuses people. Does not to mention me. Does it? Well because I, I really want to do both completely and and that does there's no time there's really not enough time to do everything I want to do. Do you take a certain style into your directorial uh, I think it's a little you? more personal and, and intimate maybe than some directors. I mean, um, Partly because I, I have acted. That, does know. it matter who you're talking to? Do, do you direct them the same way or does that um, that one-to-one -one come in? I don't know oh, no, what no. a director oh, does. I, oh no, I think it's you develop a particular relationship with each person uh -huh. and there will be certain levels to the communication with some people that you won't get to with other people. 
the, uh, you know. One of the things you were talking about, vision and looking at the, the, the thing as you go to, to be a director. And on the stage, when you do these great writers, mm -hmm. um, the staging is very simple, I would expect. Oh, yeah. It's not about the visuals there, except the, the images that are in the text that, that you that you think through those. Do you do, those, you know. do, do you use lighting and um, and costuming? No. Nothing. No. So it's uh, it's just a, a, an actor or a, or a writer at a mic, you know, at a microphone, reading so that story, it, telling that story. It? <laughs> it's like radio. Yeah. In fact, it's on the radio on KCRW. Oh, it is. Yeah. It's oh, been you on use for that? a couple of years. Oh, see, so. so that is really great. Yeah. What about new actors and and um, New work. Do you, are you always looking for new actors to to work we with? We have a, a lab a program at the Met, um, and that is getting to be pretty popular. Uh, you know, the, uh, sort of the the uh, one of the, one of the places in town where you can get recharged. And uh, we read new plays uh, at the Met every Monday night. So people uh, can come in with their work. Yeah, you have to get a board member again. We want to get somebody on the board to, to sponsor you or, or to front for you and then you know we'll read the play. Do a lot of theaters do that because that's the only way young playwrights can get anywhere or, or yeah. at least I it's like open mic at the coffee house. That's right, in a that's way. right, exactly. I think there's there's a lot of uh, more of that going on in Los Angeles right now. The Skirball Kinnis Foundation uh, does a oh. very admirable uh, uh, reading series of new plays where they, they actually pay people and to, to work on them a little while, which, I mean, in Los Angeles, to actually get paid to do theater. To do anything. Uh, to, to do be anything. An artist, <laughs> to, be, to be an actor. We'll figure it out. Okay, we're going to figure it out, and I think we go about doing this. Uh, Joan yeah. Quinn profiles the same way you do. We're always calling our friends to help us. That's right. And that's the only way you can do it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for watching our great friend Daryl Larson today, and we'll see you next time on the Joan Quinn Profiles. I forgot to say keep writing to him.